Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 145 of Brew Talk with Mr. Beer. My name is Robert Lewis. I'll once again be your host for today's show. As always, we appreciate you guys taking the time to tune in, watch our weekly videos. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying them. Hopefully you're learning something. Uh, filming from a little different set today, so hopefully uh, the quality will still be somewhat decent uh, for you guys. If you ever want to read like our videos, read the written format, best place to find us on our blog page, mrbeer.com slash blog. If you don't want to go through, try to find a certain part of the video where we answered a question, just go there, search your question, and hopefully it shall be answered. Um, so today's topic is how to change the flavor of your beer during bottling. Um, so if you're looking for kind of a simple way to add some unique flavors to your beer, to experiment with different flavors, adding different adjuncts at the bottling time is a great way uh, to do that. Uh, some of these will take the place of carbonation drops. Some of them will not. We wanted to highlight some of our favorite ones that we kind of recommend using. If there's anything in this list that we don't go over and you're like, oh, I wonder if I can use this, reach out to our customer service team. They'd be happy to answer your question, tell you how much to use, tell you to pull in or keep the carbon or pull out or keep the carbonation drops. So it's a great way to uh, experiment. So the first thing is dextrose. Um, this would be used instead of carbonation drops or like table sugar. Um, this can be found at most homebrew shops you can find online. It's very relatively cheap, very simple sugar. Um, it is very fermentable. So what putting dextrose in your bottles will do, replacing carb drops or table sugar, is that it will um, usually don't leave any residual. So it will make your beer a little more carbonated than it usually would be and will add kind of a crisper taste to it. So, you know, if you're brewing something like, like a light beer, like a lager style beer, like the American Lager, Class American Light, even like the dad's favorite cream ale, and you want it like a little lighter, a little more bubbly, a little more crispiness to it, use dextrose in your bottling instead of using table sugar or carb drops. Uh, the ratio of doing this would be you'd use the same amount of sugar or the same amount of dextrose as you would sugar um, for this step. Uh, the next one we talk about here is honey or maple syrup, which are really cool things to use. Um, what these will do is these will add some sweetness and the kind of the unique flavors to your bottle. Um, honey, we usually tend to pair it best with lighter flavor beers, lighter, you know, lagers and stuff like that, that are really just kind of a base beer to bring out the sweetness of the honey. And maple syrup usually will go with like darker beers like stouts and porters and um, other stuff like that. But feel free to experiment. Do whatever you want to do. You put maple syrup in a lager, go for it. Uh, nobody is stopping you. Um, so when you're using honey or maple syrup, um, you want to make sure you're using a freshly opened bottle. You don't want something that's been sitting around in your pantry for a couple weeks, a couple months, collecting who knows, floaty airborne bacteria, and then you get infection in your batch, and it's just not, not good to get infections in your bottles. Um, you know, the ratio for honey or maple syrup to sugar is one to one. So in our 740 bottles, you would use two teaspoons of sugar, you would use two teaspoons of honey or maple syrup. You should add it right into the bottles and then fill them up with beer. Again, these would also take the place of your sugar or your carbonation drops as they are sugary syrups. And that sugar, that simple sugar will ferment out and create that CO2 in them. Um, number three is vanilla extract. Uh, most vanilla extract does contain alcohol, so you don't need to pasteurize it or sanitize it or anything like that. It's just straight good to go. Um, like I said, you want to use a fresh bottle, though. Again, don't use something that's been sitting around for a while. And keep it fresh, fresh to death. Uh, during bottling time, you'll want to add one to two teaspoons, depending on how much flavor you want from the vanilla, and always make sure you're using a sanitized measuring spoon. So for this, since the vanilla is not full of sugars and stuff like that, it will not ferment to create the uh, CO2 in your bottle, so you still need to add carbonation drops or table sugar, or you can do dextrose and vanilla, you can do maple syrup and vanilla uh, to get real wild with it if you choose to. Um, another one I wanted to go over was coffee, which is really good. Uh, especially in beer, like coffee stouts are legit, especially during this time of year when it's still a little chilly outside. Uh, so we do have a few recipes that call for adding uh, coffee or espresso at bottling time. So these are, I think one of them is more as popular coffee one. I think it's Sunday morning coming down, I think. Um, so for this mixture, you know, you want to do the same thing as you do with the vanilla. One or two teaspoons, depending on how strong you want the flavor. The more you add, the stronger the flavor is going to be. Uh, if you're using espresso, you want to make sure it's at least room temperature when adding to your bottles. Same thing with coffee. You don't want to add hot coffee, hot espresso into your bottles. You know, that's going to, one, it could potentially warp your bottles, and it could also kill that yeast that's coming, transferring in from your fermenter. You need those little bit of yeasties in there to create that CO2, and you could just 
kill them on off with that hot liquid. Um, you can also use cold brew coffee concentrate, um, as those will still get the coffee flavors out of your beer without having to, you know, brew your own coffee. Uh, this is great stout supporters, dark beers. Um, you know, we recommend using the cold brew method because we think it creates a smoother kind of taste. Sometimes with coffee, you get that kind of those um, astringent, bittery flavors in coffee sometimes. If you're using like a nice, clean cold brew, you're good to go. Um, another great one is a whiskey. Um, so you can add whiskey to your bottles. You will want to add a shot or less to each bottle. And this is recommended for our 740 milliliter bottles. Using smaller bottles, bigger bottles, you have to scale it according. Uh, we recommend though a shot or less, man, how strong you want the flavors. Um, Cause if you add too much alcohol in there, what that can do, that can kill that yeast that's coming in from uh, the fermenter that will create the CO2 in your beer. So you'll just get flat beer. So no more than a shot. Still got to add your sugar or your carbon broth, but no more than a shot of whiskey per bottle. And the last one is, we have some recipes that call for this, uh, um, Monin flavor syrup. So it comes in a ton of different flavors. Uh, you can find on Amazon, it's used pretty widely in the home brewing industry. Uh, they have sugar-free and sugar ones. Um, if you're using a sugar-free style, you will still need to add priming sugar, so you'll still need your carb drops or your sugar. If you're using ones that are sweetened with sugar, then you don't need to add anything. Your ratio would just be one to one, um, like some of the other liquids would be, like the honey or the maple syrup. Um, you'll just add it to your bottle, fill it with beer, you're good to go. So those are kind of some adjuncts that we recommend to use when playing with bottling. Obviously, you can use whatever you want to use if we didn't cover it in this list. Uh, like I said, send us an email. We would be glad to help you out. I think one unique thing about doing this is it allows you to be very creative during the bottling process. If you want to split a batch between using honey and maple syrup, or using a couple different of the uh, flavoring syrup to see what you like, create some unique beers. You can brew one batch and you know get three different styles of beer out of it depending on what kind of syrup you're adding to each bottle. So it's a really unique way to kind of you know, experiment, create your own beers, uh, do some of that fun stuff. So it's going to wrap it up for this week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was informative and will tweak your or get your, you know, gears turning for your next bottling day to try something new and exciting. You know, if you got any questions, shoot us an email. We'd be glad to help you out with that. Uh, make sure you're following us on all social media platforms, which at Mr. Beer everywhere social media is. And if you want to learn more about Mr. Beer, hang out with fellow Mr. Beer Brewers, uh, join our Facebook group. Mr. Beers Brewing Society, you can find that just by searching Mr. Beers Brewing Society on Facebook. So that's going to wrap it up for this week's video, and I will talk to you guys next week. Cheers. Cheers.